Hi everyone, welcome back to another podcast episode. My name is Alicia Gogan, the host of the Glow Up Secrets podcast, where I help you expand your mind to become more self-aware so that you can glow up into the best version of yourself. Hello, how are we doing? Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, I don't know what this quality is like. It probably isn't bad, but it is 3 p.m. in the city, gloomy as a mother, okay? Like it's basically so dark in my condo. Like, welcome to winter, here we are. This is really, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I'm struggling here. Anyways, I do have my lamp behind me. It's giving off a little bit of like a purple pink, uh, sorry, purple pink, purple blue vibe behind me. I don't think it's even doing anything other than just being that color, but I'm trying to figure out the lighting. So just like give me some time. Um, If you see some of my videos and they're not the best lighting, it's because the sun wants to not be here. But Anyways, I am glad to be on the podcast again. I was even thinking right before I hit record and set everything up that I just love the feeling of like, okay, I am ready. Let me put my phone on do not disturb and then it's time to record. And then I just sit here speaking on a mic to a camera for like a solid hour. I love that. It's like one of my favorite things to do. And with that, we're going to talk about something important, something very important and we all always want to know and we are all always on pursuit of her, of being her and we, that's what we do. That's what we do on the podcast. That's what we, that's what you guys do when you watch my main channel videos. That's what my book is about. It's essentially becoming her. That is not the title of my book, by the way, but We have been on this pursuit of becoming that girl, like realistically, whether you want to talk about the that girl trend and if you like it or not, if you fit into it at the end of the day, what are we all here to do? We're trying to glow up into the best version of ourselves and the glowed up version of ourselves is that girl. Okay. And I have been through a very lengthy journey with glowing up and I would say I'm not only a seasoned that girl essentially, but I really do think that I am that girl. Okay. I think I am my own unique, that girl. I think that I really became that person that I was always just like wanting to be, but I learned a lot of things on that journey that were actually key to helping me actually glow up. So I want to talk about a lot of things in this episode. I want to talk about what that girl kind of is. I'll just define it a little bit more, but I also want to talk about the real things that I think will actually help you jump forward to becoming the version of you that you've always wanted. Now in my book, the first half of that book, I am definitely giving you a lot of advice, a lot of insights, but I'm telling my story in the first half of the book. And I hope you guys go get that because if you are not convinced that I went through the journey that you're going through, you will be convinced in my book because I lay it all the way out since the start of 16 years old. I'm 28 now, okay? And by the way, my book comes out January 9th, but recently I just found out that in Europe, UK and Australia, the published date will be a month behind apparently because of supply issues. So that's annoying and I, I'm still going to give updates because I don't really know if that's going to be 100%. You never know. Something might change. The universe might really have my back and then everyone's getting the book at the same time. Um, but it's fine. You will hear updates. There is going to be a pre-order and you're going to get something with that pre-order. So we need to stay tuned for that. And I really just think my book is just a very solid condensed collection of bringing you through my entire journey and you will see yourself in my journey. You will see yourself somehow some way in that book and then the second half of the book is I'm basically guiding you through a way in which I approach glowing up and the practices and the things that I did to actually move through some of the you know um, deep wounds or shadows or insecurities or ways in which I thought I needed to be or do in order to actually become that version of me that I've always wanted the girl that I was always reblogging on my tumblr back in the day was tumblr it wasn't Pinterest, okay? For all the young little youngins, some of you guys are really young and y'all don't know. I feel like Tumblr to Gen Z is is kind of like what MySpace was for me because I wasn't really in the MySpace world, although I was like, I was still old enough. Anyways, whatever. That's a whole entire tangent. So anyways, I'm excited for the book. Obviously, I think it'll be a really great, great, great guide and it's my first book. 
And by the way, y'all need to be proud, especially my haters out there who hate the fact that I don't do timestamps. I'm doing timestamps now, okay? I'm doing them on the podcast. I'm even doing them on YouTube. And so if you ever feel like you need to um, jump ahead of something because I am ranting for too long, I know a lot of you guys like the rant and it's fine, but some of y'all select few that love to live my DMs. I got you. Don't worry. Okay. So timestamps. Also, if you're listening on audio though, depending on when ads are placed in my, um, podcast episode, it's going to change the, where the timestamp kind of starts, but at least it'll help roughly. And so the textbook definition of that girl, and I'm sure you've heard of like that girl trend. It says it is a social media lifestyle trend that refers to women who prioritize wellness, productivity, beauty, and mindfulness. And of course, we're all in pursuit of better health and being more productive so we can make money and just, you know, be pretty and be smart and all of these things. And not to help sometimes online, there is a aesthetic there is a like very clean girl like rich type of lifestyle at least somewhat has wealth or some sort of money to be able to buy her green juice or buy her matcha or buy her freaking uggs or whatever it is and I think mixing this the way we think we need to become that girl with the wounded masculine type of habits like overworking or trying to be perfect with everything paired with the that girl aesthetic trend. I feel like this is the reason why a lot of people are pushing back from the that girl trend or they say that it's toxic. But it's just it's interesting, though, because it's like we still are on the pursuit, though, like women can complain all day about how um, unfair it is that like there's these aesthetics and there's these unrealistic standards, which, yes, obviously you want to like call things out. Yes, I'm not saying that, but it's like, OK, but we clearly still try and try and try and try and try again. So instead of letting go of your clear dream, obviously, to um, become the best version of yourself, since you're going to do it anyways, clearly we continue to keep trying because we are human beings and we want to evolve and grow. It's normal. It's natural. Why don't we try to learn it in a new way then? Why don't we recognize our patterns and see what is going on? And this is one of the most important things that I found on my journey in which I was not aware of at all. The way that I was in pursuit of becoming a better version of me was from a place of self-rejection, self-hate. Versus wanting to become a new version of me out of self-love, out of compassion, out of understanding, out of allowing, out of unconditional love. The reason why you are struggling so much to become this girl starts at the root. And of course, in my book, I talk about understanding your motivation and understanding your why essentially. So I'm going to quickly read a like one little pager and then we're going to continue to expand on this because if you really want to be the woman of your dreams, you need to understand yourself. Okay, so the subheading says, what's your motivation? And I wrote, as humans, we're meant to change and evolve. And there's no doubt that there's a part of every one of us that wants to go on some sort of journey of self-improvement, up-leveling, and achieving our unique desires. But why do we tend to jump into journeys of self-development that feel like punishment? Why do we continue patterns of starting and stopping behaviors that are supposed to be good for us, such as eating healthy, working out, or doing meditation practices? Why does it feel so hard to eat healthy? Why does it, like, why do I have so much resistance to moving my body? Like all of these healthy things that you're supposed to be doing and living by, if it feels really, really hard, this is why I think it feels really hard. And I'm going to answer that in my second paragraph here. So I wrote, what I learned on my glow up journey was that I was driven to change who I was from a place of self-hate and rejection. I was driven to clean up my diet and work out only as a means to an end goal, which was to meet an instinctual need to feel seen and to be loved. Now, I'll talk about this more in my book about this real actual desire of wanting love and approval and validation from probably people that you didn't get it from in childhood or your life. But in general, like we're kind of always on that pursuit, especially when you did not get that in childhood. And then I go on to say, I started my journey with the idea that who I was was inherently wrong and bad. Instead of starting a process of support and love for myself for everything I had struggled with and didn't receive in childhood, I often felt I was never enough. And because I had this deep rooted need to be chosen, I I started to believe that in order to get this need met, which I didn't really know in, in the time being, of course, which was essentially just love and acceptance, that I had to change. 
So I grew up thinking in order to be liked and loved and shown up for and chosen and just have good things in my life, I have to look and act and be a certain way. And since I look in the mirror and I say, okay, I don't fit the beauty standard, um, you know, my personality, uh, let's say somebody doesn't like my personality, um, I don't have money, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, oh my God, you are disgusting, ugly, you're never gonna get what you want, whatever. And because there's a drive so deep within me that wants to feel connected and wants to be a part of the pact, you know why? Because literally, on a biological level, obviously you need to be in a pact of people or, you know, animals, obviously, like babies need actual support. And it doesn't, that wiring doesn't go away. It never goes away. You're a human being. So if I know to my core, I need this connection, even if I'm scared of it, even if I've never gotten it, whatever, it's just a literal like biological thing. I am going to start to do things subconsciously to either change myself or act in certain ways or be good around dad or whatever I have to do in order to have people say, yep, you're good. Yep. You're pretty. You're hot. You're skinny. You're amazing. Da, da, da. In high school, I didn't have a lot of self-worth. I wasn't getting picked from a parent at home. So I didn't really have much love for myself because I wasn't even receiving it from a parent that I was really trying to get connection to. Okay, let me try and seek it out from other people. Of course, a lot of us do that with men. So, all right, well, what is it going to have to take for me to have a man love me? Well, considering I didn't have a dad who unconditionally loved me and told me I'm amazing just the way that I am, or you don't change for a man, or this is what you expect from a man, and this is what you do not let in your life, and you are better than this and this, that, I didn't necessarily have that support, so I had to, of course, build on my own, and I did a good job. I wasn't like, crazy. I didn't need my dad to tell me every single thing. And my mom did a really good job. But at the end of the day, I still had a lot of low self-worth. All right. So in high school, who's getting picked and who's getting picked by the guys? Hmm. The pretty girls. All right. So let me go on a journey. Let me go on a journey to change myself. Why? Because inherently deep down in my soul, I feel like I'm not good enough. And since this drive is so freaking strong within me of wanting to be connected to other people and wanting to be chosen and wanted, I will go to absolute extremes because I have literally turned on my own self and said, no, I am inherently not pretty enough, not good enough, not whatever. I just, you know, we all have insecurities. When you're telling yourself that every single day, the voices get louder. You know what voice gets loud? Your tyrant voice. And your tyrant voice is very smart. It's actually a part of really essentially your ego, right? Your ego is like making sure that you're, you know, um, performing well with, with the children in school and like getting you to where you need to go. It's great. But sometimes that, that, um, voice gets really, really loud. And it's crazy because it's actually trying to keep you safe, right? Okay. Let me get really loud in Alicia's ear and tell her she must strictly diet and she must lose 10 pounds and she must look exactly like those girls because that's who gets chosen, even though everyone else over here is getting chosen, but I can't focus on that because I'm so hyper-focused on this. This is my environment, whatever it is. And this is how the unhealthy cycles begin. Okay. And when you begin a wellness routine or a workout regimen from this place of self rejection, not only do you either go really hard or really strict on yourself, you also usually don't find any enjoyment in this because realistically, it's just you being under this tyranny in, in your head, but you're the one doing it. This is not to mean that you're not going to have discipline on yourself and you're not going to need to like push past your comfort zone. And yes, obviously on the opposite side of this coin, working out is not the most fun in the whole entire world, but we should be doing these things, these wellness practices, you know, working on ourselves from this place of true support of looking in the mirror and saying, oh my God, you are such an amazing person. You deserve to have nourishing meals. Your body, it doesn't matter how big or how small or whatever. I'm not gonna be a tyrant on you. I'm not going to pick on you in the mirror and say, oh my God, you're less than because you don't have hips like the other girls or you don't have an ass like the other girls or you have small boobs or you have this type of hair. I am not gonna hate on you for that. And on top of that, if there's things that we can change, let's say, um, you know, our way weight. We know we're really, really overweight and it's unhealthy. And the doctors are telling us, let's say like that situation. Okay. Because I'm not pissed off and I'm not disgusted. I don't hate myself for this. I'm going to understand what got me to this place in the first place. And then I'm going to start eating and moving my body and getting into nature and talking to friends and doing all these things because I deserve it. And guess what? You will probably find on that journey somewhere in your life, someone may 
made you feel like you weren't deserving. And that's why you started treating yourself like that, because that's what happens. You learn from other people. But the thing is this, when you are trying to change yourself from a place of self-rejection and self-hate, since you're in this laser focused tyrant mindset, you leave no room for error. You leave no room for unconditional love. You leave no room for you messing up. You are so in survival mode. Of course, makes sense. You're, you've, this is what you've learned. But because you're so in survival mode, you don't allow anything to come into your direction. And you might become successful by doing that, right? You might, you know, make more money or you might lose some weight or you might change things in your life. But when you are at a point of burnout or when you are at a point where you keep starting and stopping things, Things. Um, you do well for a week, yes, but then you binge on the weekend. When you do these unhealthy um, behaviors, which on a physical level mess up your physical body, okay? And I, I talked about that a little bit in my book. That's when you need to understand that you trying to change from you being attached to this outcome because it will confirm to you a better story about yourself. You will always essentially fail because you'll never stop. You will be so tied into this tunnel vision um, cycle over and over again, and you won't even realize that you're actually like, degressing yourself because you're just convinced that it actually is getting you somewhere. But what you actually need in my personal opinion, and this is the thing that changed it for me was to tap into this idea of imperfection, understanding you will never and should never even reside in one specific tunnel vision, masculine, toxic energy and trying to do everything at hundred percent all of the time. It doesn't make any sense. It logically doesn't make any sense, but we try and do that anyways. And we continue to go in cycles until you get sick and tired of it or until you get sick, which I did both, honestly. And the way that I actually got consistent with moving my body and being productive and all my wellness routines was from a place of actually, I deserve this. Actually, I was not treated well when I was younger, but I look in the mirror and I can fully say, I have always been worthy. I don't care what someone else said to me or didn't do in my childhood or even in my adult life. If someone rejected, if someone denied me, I'm not taking it personally. I deserve to live a good life. Why on earth am I here to not live a good life? That makes no sense. And so let's bring it back to how to actually be that girl. You understand that she has flaws. Now, this does not mean there is not a higher version of you. This does not mean that you can't aspire to be an up-leveled, better version of you. But in order for you to actually get to her, you're going to need to leave room for error, for self-acceptance, for love, for unconditional love. Because again, how are you going to become the version of you that you are not right now? Yeah, she probably has more wellness routines, probably has more work opportunities. She probably has more friends. Maybe she has like a relationship, whatever it is. The way that you become that version is you take action in your life, which is what you've been trying to do. But then you only take it for a little bit and then you fall back. But if you have more of a mindset of letting things go, you will be able to execute more actions more consistently, which will get you to the results. I promise you that. So if you want to be that girl, let's talk about both sides of the coin. Okay. I'm going to give you just like a few examples. So, you know, and you just have like a vision of like things that maybe you want to do. Let's talk about like the textbook version of being that girl. Like what does she do? How does she think? Whatever. We've been kind of talking about it a lot. So it's like you, and you already know, you already know, and I'm going to quickly read it. I just made this list up. She has a plan. She has a vision. She has a dream for herself and she is on pursuit of that dream. She steps into a routine that allows her to bring her closer to this dream. So every week, every month, every year, she has an action plan in which she is working towards these goals. She also knows that health is well, so she prioritizes her eating, eating intentionally, moving her body, getting proper sleep, all of the that girl wellness trends that you see, you know, all of the good stuff that we know. Um, and also like she connects with her friends. She has a great social life. Maybe she has a healthy relationship. This is like the perfect textbook version of that girl. And I think honestly, the main thing, if you want to be that girl, you definitely need to have a vision. Find a vision for yourself. Find a dream. Find multiple dreams. I don't care. But we're going to talk a little bit about that um, at the end of the episode. So with the textbook version of being that girl, we all essentially know that. And then we try and then we kind of struggle. And I think the reason why you struggle is because you don't have this mindset that I'm going to talk about. And I think when you start adopting some of the things that I'm going to read out here, you will 
you will get out of your own way and you will get results in your life. Okay. I didn't, I never stopped my pursuit of glowing up to the best version of myself. It's just the way in which I tried to do it was different. And that's what my book is about. And this list is essentially like what I live by, what I've done, how I think and move. So obviously you're going to be your own, that girl, your own it girl. But I think that these are some things that really, really helped shift things for me on my glow up journey. So one, she does shadow work and doing shadow work can really help you with this motivation of self-rejection and self-hate, getting to the root of why you don't like yourself and how can you learn to either like or love yourself or like parts of yourself or your insecurities, like how to reintegrate shadows. And a lot of people I feel like are scared of this because it's like, oh, I don't want to accept my, the fact that I'm like overweight right now, or I don't want to accept the fact that I have these imperfections. That's fine. But it's looking at yourself like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to change and, you know, incorporate more that girl wellness habits from this place of hating myself because I'm like this. Let me understand why I'm like this. Let me understand why I hate myself even. And if, if that's what I do or why I reject parts of me and let me learn if I want to reintegrate these parts and on top of that I can still work on these uh, parts of me for sure but not from this place of waking up every single day hating why are we doing that we don't need to do that now in my inner child discovery journal prompt guide I have shadow work prompts in there so if you're interested then definitely go check it out I am putting a sale on it so it's going to be five dollars Probably I'll just do that for the week for like the Black Friday. So when you see this episode or sorry, listen to it or see it, it will, the sale already be on. So definitely go check that out. Same with the other ones will be. Another thing that I think that she does is that she isn't sprinting to the finish line. And I even wrote an example here. She closes her laptop and lets things go knowing there's more work to be done. I find, I see this a lot in some of my friends who are like, like entrepreneurs and like working a lot. And I was like this too, but like, this pursuit of like needing to get everything done all at once right now it's robbing you it's robbing you the way i like to look at life is there's always going to be something to work on there's always going to be a project to do there's there's so many chances and so many chapters and so many opportunities in my life to move to this area or you know uh, start up this hobby or try this business idea out and yes i know there's age there's like there's a million things yes but at the end of the day it's like we are like I always think about this when I used to try and do so many wellness routines it's like I possibly cannot do all of these in in under 30 minutes babe so we need to pick and choose which one we want to do but really this just comes down to just letting go just understanding that when you release something it's going to be there the next day or it's going to come back to you um even when it comes to like closing your laptop let's say actually and like being done for the day like there's no one's beating you um no one's like doing a bunch of more work than you if you close your laptop and allow yourself to rest obviously like understandably rest like those type of things but if you have a mindset of like oh my god the whole world is working and I'm not and I need to catch up blah 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 well then then you're gonna burn yourself out but then you're gonna burn yourself out so then like you don't want to do that so anyways I just think that she's not sprinting to the finish line she's not rushing things she's not um taking um actions based out of complete scarcity she's allowing herself to think and um a lot of great things come from slowing down and trusting and and allowing and releasing which is hard for a lot of women of course especially when you're in survival mode um the next one she takes action instead of obsessing over things such as pinterest i wrote in here and i just simply bring this back to just complaining or wanting something so bad but just not taking any action towards it like or like when you know people are constantly complaining about oh my god everyone everyone just like has so much money and I don't and I'm broke and this that and like I don't know get a second job like that's what I did like I I don't have time to sit around and cry about the fact that I don't have the life that I want I'm going to actively get up and find the life that I want and I think at the beginning of my journey I was very much so in this victim mentality of like oh my god like just looking at all the pretty girls and this, that, and telling myself either like, you know, I, I have to lose 10 pounds before then I can get that bikini and look really cute and take that photo and like go out with my friends. But I also could have just gone to the freaking beach. And also if I actually went to the beach consistently, I probably would have been down 10 freaking pounds because I wouldn't be sitting in my room scrolling on Pinterest, being so upset in my emotions and then eating donuts and like binging on food because I'm so mad. And said, I could have just gone to the beach with my friends. Okay, I'm 10 pounds overweight. Not a big deal. Does the water require me to be 
under 10 pounds in, in my weight? No, let's go have fun. And now I'm connecting in life. Now I'm moving my body and oh my God, it's the end of the summer and I don't even have that 10 pounds anymore. Crazy how things work when you just let things go. Another thing is she's intentional with her food and like eating food, but she knows that obsessing is simply just a coping mechanism. And she also knows that fad diets don't work. And she also knows that being too restrict on her is going to lead to probably an unhealthy relationship with food. Now, I'm gonna make a whole episode on how I really navigated fixing my relationship with food. And I wouldn't say it's a perfect relationship because I don't think anyone has a perfect relationship with food. It's just unique to them. So I have a unique relationship to food. But in general, I could say I I just eat very intentionally. I make sure I'm nourishing my body. I'm cooking my foods. Um, You know, obviously I have some goals. So yeah, my foods are going to be more higher protein because I'm weight training, but I'm not getting to the point where it's like I'm counting my calories, my macros, and I'm obsessing because I know that where that's going to lead me. I'm not going to say that, you know, counting macros or calories don't have their benefit in terms of teaching someone how to like portion their food. Sometimes some people literally have no idea, but like... I just know that that's, there's a fine line and you kind of need to let that go. And I just think that the real that girl, I just don't think that she is hyper obsessing over food, but I totally get it by the way. Like if you're like there and you're feeling kind of insecure, like, damn, I'm not that girl because I am obsessing over my food. No, what I'll say is that girl's not perfect. So you're going to have phases of being that girl. You're going to, you know, like, damn, you're going to have a wound come up and you're going to be freaking going through it like I did. I'm still not looking in the mirror and saying, oh my God, I'm not that girl. No, bitch, you're that girl, okay? Um, Next thing, she has non-perfect days and allows things just to be. And I said, tapping into emotions. And this is literally, literally, go watch last week's episode. If you have not, I talk a lot about this and all of my content, but what I just said, essentially, let things be. There's going to be times where you feel really sad. You feel really unmotivated to the point where maybe you had a half-ass workout or you didn't do it at all. Let's not beat ourselves up for it. You know what? Actually, I forgot to say this in one of my episodes. Um, last week when I was going through it, I got up and I was going to the gym. I literally went on the treadmill for like five seconds. There was like so many people in my gym for some reason at this time. And my knee was kind of hurting when I was walking, although I knew that probably would go away. I was such in a bad mood, terrible mood. I was really, really trying to like keep my emotions like at bay. And I was like, I need to leave. And you know what? When I decided that I I was going to leave, which I never, I never really do. And that's when I knew like there was something, not something wrong. I knew it was going on, but I was like, wow, like I really need to process my emotions right now. The gym is not important right now. I need to process my emotions at this point. Can't keep being strong, this, that, and the third. But I also was very aware of the fact that there was going to be a voice in my head that said, oh, but you just went to the gym and you didn't do your workout. Oh my God. The, The negative voice that wants to come in from years ago. And I said, no, If I am deciding to choose my emotions right now, what I'm not going to do is now torment myself all day because I did not go to the gym. Move on. Let it go. It's not a big deal. Once you make it a big deal, it becomes a big deal. You know why? Because now you're like, hmm, okay, well, I didn't go to the gym. Screw it. I'm going to eat a bunch of food all day and screw it. I'm going to start on Monday, Friday anyways. Nope, we're not doing that. That girl doesn't do it. I'm so sorry. Another one I wrote is that she catches herself when she's falling into old habits for specific outcomes. I think this is more related to anything to do with eating or fitness because sometimes, especially at the beginning, but really whenever, you can definitely fall into being really attached to your outcomes, right? It's like, okay, like this year I want to focus on weight training and building my glutes. This is this year for me. That's like my main goal for the whole entire year, essentially. Um, I had to be very, very careful with not going too extreme on that because I knew if I really was hyper obsessing and being like really tied to like, now I'm looking at my body and being like, okay, because I have this goal this year to grow my glutes, like I'm going to start looking at myself like my glutes are small and like they're not nice or like I'm weak or whatever like that. I wasn't going to do that. I was just like, this is a goal of mine, but literally if I stop tomorrow, I stop tomorrow and I'm fine. Like I had to continue to be like that. Um, and you know, when I'm trying to eat, okay, high protein food, this, that, but I'm making sure that like, let's say I have to go out to a dinner and I 
I'm not interested in having a freaking steak because I had it all day or like whatever I had. I'm not going to hyper focus on the fact that I'm not able to eat steak right now. And like, I, I'll catch myself if I am the same way I caught myself when I was like pulling myself out of the gym. What I'm not going to do is get super mad at myself because of course, then I'm just going back in the old, old version of me. And I don't want that. And oh my God, if you're watching on YouTube, it's getting dark. It's getting dark. I need to figure out this lighting. If somebody has any lighting, um, suggestions, let me know. Like, do I put it behind me? Do I do it in front? Do I do it at the side? Do I have, there's no light. Actually, there is a light in here, but it's not on. Do I just close? I don't know. Do I get a new camera? Who knows? I don't know. Next one. She has a morning routine, a night routine slash just like a schedule that flows with her, that works with her. I preach making your morning, night, your schedule unique to you all the time, but I think it's so important that you really figure out what works for you. Does a 6 a.m. workout work for you or does it rise your cortisol so goddamn high that you are stressed, you are tired, you are burning out by 12 o'clock? Then let's maybe rethink that. But actually, um, there's going to be a video on my main channel on Sunday. So in a few days when you hear this episode, go watch that because I talk about planning and how like I do it just to maybe give you some motivation, some tips. Another thing, she remembers and learns from her past lessons. So obviously, she's just self-aware. She can recognize a, a pattern that's happening in her life and she can remind herself in the moments when she realizes she's starting to um, go in the direction of that same pattern and, and call herself out for it. And even for me, I remember when I used to have like those lows throughout my month, whether that be because of my period or just life or whatever, you just like you tend to have those lows. What I would do is I would go into a deep, dark hole of depression for like five days straight. And now I was struggling and I needed to support myself, of course. But this does not mean that in my life right now, even though it's so much better and I'm so much older, so much wiser, this, that, and the third, doesn't mean that I don't have those lows. But because I know my past, my tendencies, I'm aware, I know where this could lead me. I do my absolute best to try and keep myself afloat. So this does not mean that I'm telling myself I can't feel this thing or I can't be depressed, but you know, okay, I know that I'm in a depressive mode right now. What I can do for myself, that's the easiest thing I can do right now is I can go on this walk. It's going to be a push. I'm going to, I'm going to be pushing myself right now because I don't want to do it. But I know if I do not do this little walk, this is going to then trickle down to tomorrow or the next day, the next day, all of these habits. If I continue not to eat my food, then I'm not going to be fueled. And then I'm going to want craving other food. Like, you have to know yourself and you have to do your absolute best. I think the, that girl really, she does her best to try and pull herself out. I'm going to reach out to my friend if I start feeling really low. Do I want to talk to my friend right now? No, I want to lay in my bed and I want to watch Netflix and I want to escape from the world, but I know where that will lead me. And I'm not going to do that because I do not deserve that. It's the old version of me. And clearly I'm going through something right now, but what I'm not going to do is let myself go there because I don't need too. And I think for me personally, being somebody who had so many of those times and also health issues, I'm very, very aware of where my actions will lead me if I'm not careful in a way. I don't like to use that word because I'm, I'm not like trying to like fear myself into <laughs> you know, anything like I'm not, I'm not afraid actually at all of negative emotions. I'll let myself go there if I need to. I'm a freaking Scorpio. Okay. Next one. She is responsible. This can be in all aspects, but I even wrote here, like buys things that she actually needs versus just what she wants. Um, and you can do that literally just by sitting on things and just like asking yourself, like, do I really need this now? Or could I wait like two months? And if you could wait two months, then wait two months and see if you still want it. But of course, in general, like being um, responsible with your finances, like budgeting, like doing what you got to do, like, you know what you need to do. Like, let's not wait around, just do the thing. And it's so contradictory because next week I am totally going to be doing like a gift guide, that girl, all my favorite things type thing. But you're going to use discernment, okay? You are going to be real with yourself before getting influence even by me. All right. Another one. She knows that saying no is a form of respect to herself and also saying no actually gets her closer to what she wants in her life. Can you please rewind that and listen to it again? If life is calling you to say no and you know it, but you're too scared to do it, this is your time right now. This is your sign. This is your sign right now. Say no. Say no because you're only not saying no because you're too afraid to lose that thing or that person or that whatever. But guess what? What you are currently saying yes to is not even what you want, is it? It's not. So let go. And the only actual way that you're going to get exactly what you want 
the thing that you've been lowballing yourself on is if you say no and you know it. You know it. We always know it. Next one. Now, this one really ties into what I was just saying. She knows that the standard that she holds herself to, which means she's going to have boundaries and she's going to have to say no and she's going to, you know, probably upset people. Oh, well, that will translate to other people showing up the same way. Okay. So you're so afraid of saying no or not doing this thing or not prioritizing yourself because you think that you're going to lose that thing. But realistically, when you actually truly step into your worth, people have no other option but to conform. There's no other option but for the universe to bring you only better um, opportunities and more money and more success and more everything because that is your standard. Understand that, please. Please understand that. It took a long time for me to understand in my life. Okay, and the last one. She has belief or faith or whatever, doesn't matter what it is really, in something that she cannot see. She doesn't only have belief in herself or anything that she wants in her life only when she sees it, okay? There's gonna be times in your life where you're working towards something where you're not seeing your, um, you're not seeing the fruits of your labor. That doesn't mean you give up. That doesn't mean, oh, you know what? I'm not getting what I want. When somebody rejects you, when a guy doesn't text you back or when you're going through a breakup or I don't know, I always say that. Y'all know I say that when your ex doesn't text you back. Yikes. When your ex doesn't text you back, um, whatever it is. Okay. You are looking at this as this is working in my favor. I can't see why and how this is and damn, does it hurt or man, am I scared? Don't know when the next bill, this, that, and the third. But you know what? This is working out and there's going to be light and you have to trust that. I talk about it in my book. This is essentially lucky girl syndrome in a way. You got to, you really got to tap into that because what's the other option? What's the other option? Okay. On the camera, y'all, y'all are seeing it. It's going down. The sun that wasn't even out is down at this point. Um, okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a list of things that I really think like, that's the true it girl. That's the true that girl. And when you think like that, when you move like that in your life, I promise you, you will start to actually become her. You will actually start to hit your goals. You will actually start to see things change in your life. So thinking about this new mind said thinking about that girl you know she prioritizes her life she has a dream she's letting herself be imperfect whatever it is um sometimes it's good to just like then translate that onto like either a mood board or in words and kind of read that and remind yourself of that you know really let that saturate in your mind but I want to quickly touch back on when I was saying how some people think like being that girl it's unrealistic and this that well now we know why and we're going to do things differently um but regardless you're that girl habits and the things that are going to bring you to who you want to be, it's going to look very different. So don't get discouraged if you see girls online living a certain way, have certain amounts of money, has a certain aesthetic, beauty, however they look, whatever, our body shape. Don't let that deter you. Use things as motivation and whatever doesn't serve you, just let it go, obviously. Um, but I was on Pinterest. And of course, a lot of my Pinterest is like that girl aesthetics and this, that. And But it's my own for sure. It's my own. If you're interested in my Pinterest, by the way, I'll have it linked in the show notes down below, wherever. But I want to quickly read someone's definition in word form. I'm going to like rapid fire them out of what, they're like picturing that girl to look like and what they clearly like that's what it means to be that girl for them but then I'm going to read mine to you and then I want you to make your own and I just want you to hear this because I I need you to know that it's so unique to you so someone wrote sleep eight to ten hours a night eliminate toxicity in your life products and people silk pillowcases eat whole foods water pick before brushing teeth floss acupuncture magnesium at night for good sleep and lessening anxiety meditate every morning for at least 10 minutes express gratitude pray often turmeric on everything incorporate adaptogen in your regimen like lion's mane reishi pearl powder ashwagandha probiotics goat milk bath sunscreen consistently on face and neck gua sha j roll every night dnd ice cubes on your face every morning nature's caffeine and will depuff your face <laughs> Um, I guess, I don't know. That's the girls say that that's a true thing though. Um, Pilates and yoga, 10 K steps a day, deep breaths, blah, blah, blah. Okay. She keeps going on and on and on. Okay. So in her mind, like that's what that girl does. Now, obviously 
we all know like you cannot possibly do all those things but like that's how her vision that's what her vision holds great amazing but you don't need to let that be your vision if you don't want if you want to be that girl you be that girl whatever that is to you so let me just quickly bring it back to I I wrote a few things okay and genuinely this is the vision that I have in my head every day when I wake up I don't like read off of these words but essentially everything that I do in my life is like either working towards these things or this is like what I want to be focusing on in this season of my life, by the way, just the season. You look at your life like seasons, you know, you guys know I really want to live in suburbia. Okay. I want a house. I want my family, this, that, but like, that's not what's on here right now because these things on here are tied to my current like three to six month, um, goals. Okay. So I wrote deep sleep, Knowing I'm worthy of 100% love and commitment from everyone around me, high protein foods, eating breakfast, weight training, making a lot of money, consistent brand deals, 10K plus views on the podcast channel. Okay. Y'all know I've been trying to grow this podcast channel. Um, Scalp massages and hair care, healthy teeth, romanticizing every season of life, cycle syncing, Pilates, saying no to things without feeling bad, disconnection from phone, dope playlists, fun, creative, aesthetic content, TikToks that I'm proud of, incredible book launch, capsule collection, journal guides, girl chats and community building, etc. These are all very specific. So let me just bring it back to like healthy teeth. I didn't just put healthy teeth on here because it's like, oh, like in order to be like a cool girl or like the best girl or that girl, like you have to have healthy teeth. I just personally want healthy teeth. If you don't care about that, which I feel like most people do, whatever. But also the way in which you like healthy teeth to me don't look like veneers. Like they don't look like picture perfect. Like I just want to make sure everything is healthy or like the scalp massages and hair care right now. I'm really focusing on that. It's going, we're going into winter. The winter does damage on my hair, baby boo. So I want to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can for my hair. And also like I'm getting a trim, just like doing regular routine things, um, from living a summer of chaotic, fun hair out, everything like that. So like, they're just things that are very, um, unique to me. And now what I can do though, is I can take these words and I can go on Pinterest and I can type some of these words in, or I can find aesthetics that match that word and then add it to a mood board. And that's my mood board for the winter or for the next three months or for the whatever. So I think that that's what you guys should do. I think you should do it. And listen, if you're an OG and even watching on the main channel, then you already did this for fall. So what you can do is I have a link down below and I have a mood board template. It's for free. And you just like, you will like be able to duplicate your own. Um, Don't request because some people request to like edit. You don't need to do that. You can just like make a template. It will allow you. And also the link to the video, if you want to walk through of, of everything, if you are really wanting to step into a new version of you and like do this whole process, that will be in the link. And I think that you should just make a new mood board because actually that's what I'm doing now because I even said on one of my episodes that I have already essentially lived out that fall mood board vibe and I'm like done. So that I think is it for this episode. It was very long. All I know it's very long. Um, And I know there's so much to take in and there's no real clear cut answer on like how you are going to be this girl. But in my personal opinion, what my clear cut answer is, is that I need to live balanced. I need to change from a place of self-love. I need to know that I'm inherently worthy. I need to be okay with um, imperfections at the moment. I need to let myself cry if I need to, or I need to re-establish a relationship with healthy masculine energy, which is what I talked about in last week's episode episode. Like there's like, I have to look at myself like, okay, I'm this unique human being. I have these wounds. I have these needs and wants. How can I get myself these things in healthier ways? How can I seek education? How can I invest back into myself and learn how I'm going to meet my needs? Because I ain't nobody going to do it for me. And what I am done with is being in patterns based off of my past. And that's what I stopped doing. And that's where I'm at right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please stay tuned for more book updates. Of course, don't forget the sale will probably just be running for a week from when you hear this episode. Anything I already mentioned will be down below. And if you could so graciously leave a review on Spotify or Apple, I would absolutely love that. And preferably five stars if you think that I deserve five stars. That would be great. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.